Witnesses, Mr. Abdul Hakim Idris, will give evidence in person. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Idris was born in Bhutan City, educated in Islamic religion in underground madrasa in Khotan, and then went to Al Azhar University in Egypt and then settled in Germany. He's a co founder of World Uyghur Youth Congress, and he's the executive director of Center for Uyghur Studies and a ins general inspector of World Uyghur Congress. Mr. Idris is the author of the book called Menace, about the China's colonization of the Islamic world and Uyghur genocide. Welcome to Uyghur Tribunal, Mr. Idris. I understand you have a PowerPoint that you would like to present. The tribunal has read your report, and I would appreciate if you make it as short as possible, but 10 minutes would be welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, my research has been mostly on how China used their economic might to buy silence of nation that would be expect to be allied with the Uyghur Muslims. These uh, being primary Muslim majority countries, usually we would expect to hear pronounce, uh, pronounced outcry against the Uyghur genocide. But we didn't hear it. Still, in Turkestan, there were copies of Qur'ans burnt, mosques turned into bars, the kids educated in atheist, assist, uh, atheist uh, schools. Still, we didn't uh, hear any word from any Muslim leader or any Muslim institution, or we didn't uh, saw any demonstration in majority Islamic country. Next slide, please. China, to use this information in Islamic uh, countries, there used several arguments. First is internal uh, affairs discourse. They saying since the occupation of East Turkestan 1949, it is internal matters. Nobody should interfere in our issues. Second is they using language about extremism, religious extremism. Actually, the, 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 in Chinese eyes, the three evils are religious extremism, separatism, terrorism. The, those three uh, uh, aspects is designed to entire population put in the box. And this is working in Islamic countries because they are uh, against religious extremism, separatism, and they have uh, terrorism problems. Third is using propaganda. China used Chinese Islamic Association to tell all the Muslim countries, religious leaders and institutions, telling them, we are fine. We just have problem with extremist people. They held a press conference, uh, seminars, and, and abroad in, in Muslim countries. And they're using Hajj uh, pilgrims, like a diplomacy. And they're inviting many, many governmental and the civil societies, Muslim leaders to Turkestan, pre-arranged mosque to show them this is fine. So if you, for example, if you look, I, I'm actually studied in Al-Azhar and I'm very closely following the uh, Islamic uh, news outlets around the world. We don't find any reports about the tragedy in Turkestan. For example, in Egypt, there is the Al-Akhbar, Akhbar al-Yom newspaper. This is the second newspaper after Al-Ahram. 
In this newspaper, there is a page uh, bought by the Chinese embassy. News from China will every day, like a miracle, sold for the, uh, for the Egyptian people. So these governmental media outlet cannot report about the Uyghur issue properly or nothing happening there. I am, uh, next slide please. No, one, one uh, before, yes. And the CCP using vaccines and the mask diplomacy to get those countries under uh, Chinese influence. For example, it was in Turkey a more outcry about this Uyghur genocide by the opposition parties. The Chinese delayed to distribute uh, its vaccine to Turkey. In the uh, Lebanon, the Lebanon is a uh, very sectarian country. There is a Hezbollah, they work on like a branch of CCP, but there is a Sunni uh, media outlets. They were talking about Uyghur issue and the government couldn't support China openly. And Chinese government delayed vaccine distribution there too. In the many countries uh, around the world uh, to, to, to bring under control. So I, I am in 10 minutes uh, very hurry because I prepared uh, 15 minutes a slide and uh, I'm ready after that to answer your question. Next slide, please. So as you heard before, uh, many uh, uh, colleagues testified before me. They said China treating Ostrichstan on the Uyghur people like a colonial threat. I was born there, I went to school there, and I'm almost 30 years closely analyzing, studying their decisions, their implementation, their education system. They built a Bingtuan in our country, like a Bingtuan is XPCC, semi-military company, like an East Indian company uh, were built by the British in India. And they're controlling almost 90% of East Turkestan economy, economy, roads, water, energy, any sources. So they can put more than 3 million Uyghurs in concentration camps. This BRI is one version of the Bingtwen in Islamic countries. A, they, they have a well very nice name, win-win, connect the people to people, serve the mankind. Those are the slogan by the CCP. But reality is very tragical. This Silk Road, the, 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 the BRI is, uh, had three contents. Silk Road Economic Build, the 21st Century Maritime Silk Road, and digital Silk Road. I skip the details uh, to next uh, slide, please. I was asked uh, to concentrate uh, by the uh, counselor on Central Asian and Middle East country. So I will uh, talk about this issue. First, I will uh, uh, talk about the Iran. As you know, Iran, uh, Islamic, Republic, Islamic Republic of Iran, their uh, the constitution, the thir one second, third paragraphs are to be uh, about the Muslim worldwide, to protect them, to serve for God. But if you look what the Iranian regime did with China, you can see it. Especially the Iranian Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei, when he was president of Iran, uh, Iran 
He was once president. He visited Kashgar. He went to Aitka Mosque. He prayed there. And he said, when I was that time in Egypt, he said, when I was studied in Qum, I read um, uh, uh, a lot of poems about Kashgar. I wished I visited my, my dream come true. Why I talk this? Because Iranian supreme leader knows what's happened right now in Turkestan. Knows what the China's doing on war on Islam, on faith. It's not war between Muslim and Christian. It's not war between Jewish and Muslims. It's war on entire religion. Christianity, Buddhism, especially Islam. Even Iranian didn't hear it. And they closed 400 billion agreement with China next 25 years. China building their roads, infrastructure. Uh, they installing their Huawei system, 5G networks, and many more. What's the Huawei systems mean for the for the for the China? It means they can know and monitor every word, every aspect where they install this Huawei system. In Saudi Arabia, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman made perfectly clear he, he, he sees China as a, a key curriculum to his 2030 vision. He wants to build Saudi Arabia and modernize it. And China investing right now in Saudi Arabia more than 93 billion US dollars, including drone factory near Riyadh. After MB, uh, MBS visited China, he gave a, 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 a statement on Chinese TV, says China has right to security to counter terrorism effort, uh, uh, efforts against so-called religious extremism. And China showed this every corner of the Turkestan, telling the Uyghur people, even Saudi Arabia supported what we are doing here. Next is uh, Gulf countries. There is a Kuwait uh, a dream of economic uh, free zones, and Emiratis, they desire to work with China very closely. There is uh, Confucius Institutes, they are learning, educating their kids in uh, Chinese Mandarin, and uh, singing in the anniversary of 100 years CCP's uh, day. Recently, in Dubai, there were a secret inter internment prison to keep Uyghurs in Dubai, in Emirat. This is all after they deported or they didn't ex exceed the uh, uh, passports or uh, residency in the, the Dubai. If you look in Central Asia, Saudi Arabia, Turkey, in the uh, uh, Emirates, there were many, many Uyghur business people. They were doing business with the local people. They, they, they have partners in China, Chinese companies. After Xi Jinping began this genocide against the Uyghurs, they lost their entire business. Right now, the... the Mr. Idris, the time is running out. Okay, can, I, you, can you speed up, please? Okay. Next slide, please. I already done. Next, please. Okay. Uh, I talk about Egypt. Egypt has very good relationship with China. They building and around the Suez Canal free economic zones. What, uh, what, uh, which uh, president is sitting in the palace, they had good relationship. Even the Muslim Brotherhood President Mohammed Morsi, when he was president, he, was first, he went to first to China. After him comes Sisi, he is doing business with China. 
And Egypt deported 2017 many, many students. They were studying in Al-Azhar University. Al-Azhar University is the oldest Islamic institution in the world. They deported Uyghur students back to China. As you see, investment. This is, this is a nice word, but that is not investment of a Chinese version. It's corruption, disinformation, this is security, diplomacy pressure, they building, they have right now military presence in Tajikistan. They uh, have many, many uh, uh, military personnel under name security companies in Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan. Whatever happened in Kyrgyzstan, as, as we know, there's many change in governments, but nothing changed for the China, it seems. They are in control right now. Next slide, please. Uh, I should talk a little bit about Afghanistan, Taliban, and the Islamic organization, very shortly. China has very, very close relationship with Pakistani military and in security apparatus. And Pakistani military can choose their government how they choose, we know it. The Taliban had, uh, since its foundation, very good relationship with China. Even 1998, Chinese ambassador to Pakistan met with the, the, the Taliban's founder, Mullah Umar, in Kandahar. In 2000, 2000, before 2001, 2000, they deported 13 Uyghurs from Afghanistan to China. Recently, the Taliban uh, announced Muhammad Hassan Akhun will be prime minister of this uh, Taliban government. He was at the time when the Taliban deported Uyghurs. And uh, everybody knows today what the Taliban seeking close relationship with China and China uh, doing the same. And there's two organizations. One was designed to uh, repress uh, Uyghurs and abroad, the Shanghai Cooperation Organizations. Since its establishment, the, 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 the resolution, if we look the resolution analyzed, it's just meant against the Uyghurs. The Uyghurs have border with Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan. But they, there is no one can flee those countries. If they flee those countries, even in Pakistan, they give them back. So the Uyghur refugee, what we today have in Turkey, they went through China, went to Southeast Asia, come those countries. What, what means that? That means those Central Asian countries already under Chinese control. Even Hussein Jan Jalil was one is a Canadian citizen, was deported from Uzbekistan to China. He's uh, sentenced for life prison, sitting in prison today. And the other organization is Islamic uh, uh, Cooperation of Islamic Organization, OIC, Organization of Islamic Cooperation. They, uh, 2019, uh, early 2019, there were delegation. They went to Turkestan, Kashgar, Dawanchin, Urumqi. In this delegation, there were some diplomats from uh, Central Asia, especially from Kazakhstan. They came back and they did a resolution to condemn this situation in Turkestan at, uh, in, in, in the Dubai summit. The China interferes through Saudi Arabia and the Pakistan change those resolution to support China's genocidal policy in Turkestan. That's what's happened. Mr. And, Sabi, uh, excuse me a minute. Thank you. Mr. Sabi, Thank you. Um, yes. I believe there was, first of all, we have to understand that this witness has uh, a commitment, nothing wrong with that. 
to the World Uyghur Congress, and we, of course, take that into account. We've all read his report, and I believe there were some particular facts you wanted to highlight, because I discussed it with you. Uh, but if he's covered them, then it might be time for the panel to have an opportunity to make their questions. I, I guess so. If, the, if there is any time at the end, I will ask those yeah. questions. But otherwise, I yield that to the panel. Hey, yes, thank you. There will Professor be questions Col from uh, the panel now. Yes. Um, just before you s start, um, Professor Kaur, I, Mr. Idris, we are drawing you to a close now to answer questions. We fully understand your commitment to the cause and the passion with which you speak, but you must understand that we are completely dispassionate and you will be asked questions of fact, and it will help us if you are able to be as matter-of-fact as possible. Order. Thank you for your testimony. Could I uh, begin with a question about yourself? You grew up in uh, Xinjiang and you left um, a few decades ago. Why did you leave and when was that? As you know, uh, in, uh, it's, uh, my, my testimony is all policies, politics, because I am a victim of Chinese policies in Turkestan. I left Turkestan in 1986 after my parents put me in uh, uh, underground madrasa, studied five years in hotel, because at that time uh, the, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. So China gave us a little bit freedom to build our mosque, learn a, a little bit about our religion. So I went to an underground mosque underground madrasa. My teacher were uh, be prison in Chinese prison over 20 years. He had taught us and I, I uh, he had to teach us and I learned by him. And then my parents, actually that was my wish because uh, if, if you sit in madrasa and read the books, you know, uh, first to come in the mind is Al-Azhar, Cairo, Al-Azhar University in Cairo. This is every Muslim's desire to go there to learn the Islamic uh, beliefs. So my parents uh, managed to send me to abroad to study there. Uh, I studied four years in Egypt. After that, uh, I thought I, I, I get out. It was one way ticket because we couldn't go back to Turkestan. So then we immigrated to Europe. I came to Germany at the end of 1990s. You, you couldn't go back because you feared for your safety, you might be detained? Uh, 1989, uh, from Egypt, we went to, to Hajj, to Saudi Arabia. And there uh, were uh, many uh, people from Turkestan came to Hajj. But um, with them were, was a scholar. We know him uh, in our city in Hotel. And he was very close to our teacher. We sat in Arafat, more than 17 students from Pakistan at the time and from Egypt. And he told us, you know what? We did big mistake. We sent you to abroad to study. If you come back, you have two ways. One is you will teach true religion in our country. You will put in the jail or you will that. Our people never benefit from you. Or you will cooperate with Chinese government. And that is, that in that case, our people will never benefit from your uh, studies. And maybe you will go to hell. And it was like a stone in our heads. And we uh, figured out almost one year, at that time, the, the Soviet Union was still there. And we decided, okay, we have to go to West, to Europe, to Australia, to America, to, uh, to bring our case in the world. That was my journey. Okay. Thank you. So to return to your testimony, you say in 2019 um, at the UN Human Rights Council, 27 countries issued a letter flattering China for its successes on human rights, and then it increased to 50. So can you elaborate on, first of all, these 37 countries that supported um, their 
human rights record and the increase to 50? Yes, uh, in 2019, um, uh, it was almost uh, two years, uh, more than millions of people uh, were in jail. Uh, 2019, it was two years, I didn't spoke my parents. Uh, as my, me, uh, thousands of Uyghur people uh, lost contact with the loved one. At that time, 22 countries uh, uh, wrote a letter to support, that condemned China's policy in Turkestan. And there were uh, almost uh, 30 uh, some countries supporting China's policies. It increased almost 50 to 57. I think one is withdraw his signature uh, in Qatar. Uh, the rest are, uh, the, the 50 countries, if you look, that there is a list in my report, most of them are Muslim countries, majority Muslim countries. The 22 countries they supported Uyghurs are America, UK, and Western countries. And recently joined just uh, one uh, Muslim, we call it Muslim country or Muslim lives there, Bosnia and Herzegovina. The rest of them are all non-Muslim countries supporting, uh, the, the, the support, uh, the condemning the Chinese policy in Turkestan. So, are they all countries, the ones who support China, are they all countries with BRI investments? Uh, of course, the, there are BRI investment, and the, uh, if you uh, look what the, they have to, the, to uh, go along with China is, first of all, there are all authoritarian regimes. Second uh, is, uh, the, the, there are uh, some of them member of the BRI. Uh, third is China's uh, disinformation and the United Front uh, uh, plus Chinese embassies working very well. And so they get the support uh, through this uh, initiative. You talk about these countries exchanging blacklists. Can you elaborate on what you mean by blacklists? Yes, the blacklist is uh, designed to, to uh, uh, get each other the Shanghai Cooperation Organization's members. There are uh, eight countries right now uh, in Central Asia. And uh, they uh, have many, many resolutions. There is a Shanghai uh, uh, resolution against extremism, terrorism, separatism. And they uh, agreed to, uh, to like a... a, a <coughs> Uh, to, to like uh, bring a black list in an exchange with them. For example, China tell the Kazakhstan uh, there those those person are terrorists or they have criminal uh, economic criminal record. We want them back or you arrest them for us. And uh, uh, the, the, in practice, uh, Kazakhstan or Kazakhstan uh, can say the same. Uh, but uh, uh, mostly, uh, it was. Uh, to uh, bring the Uyghurs under control, especially uh, if you look Kazakhstan, there are many, many hundred thousand Uyghurs living there, uh, almost uh, hundred years. In the Kyrgyzstan, there were many, many Uyghurs living there. So after the uh, uh, Soviet collapsed, uh, China jumped up to uh, establish this uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and uh, through this, and they announced the BRI again. And these countries do all or most have extradition treaties with the PRC. And if they do, do they, when they're requested for certain people, they deport them unquestioningly? Is, that's a question. I think the Shanghai, uh, the, what I uh, saw in the, in the analyzed and in the reports, uh, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization's member doesn't need uh, extra uh, extradition treaty because they already agreed on this organization to uh, cooperate and uh, arrest and deport each other. But uh, China uh, tried to get extradition treaty with several BRR countries. For example, right now, one person sitting in Moroccan custody recently uh, uh, the, the Morocco want to uh, the, the deport him to China, uh, Hassan Idris, uh, his name is. 
but uh, the, 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 uh, the legal process still going on in Morocco. And Morocco uh, had uh, 2016 uh, uh, extradition treaty with China. So, they, for instance, in the Morocco case, in Morocco itself, they are going through legal procedures regarding the person in question. So that person may not be extradited. That is, is that the case? Is this uh, what you're uh, saying? It, uh, it, it, it's uh, possible in Morocco, but not, not it's possible in, 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 in uh, Central Asia, in, in some uh, Middle East Arabian, Arabic country. Uh, and the reason being? Re reason being? Uh, because, uh, uh, the, 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 for example, the Emiratis are very cooperative with the Chinese government, and the Central Asian countries are, of course, binding their hand in the Shanghai Cooperation Treaties. And uh, even Egypt uh, has deported many, many Uyghurs. And uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia, uh, there, are, uh, there were many, many Uyghurs living in Medina, in the Mecca, uh, they lost their residency. Uh, the, they, the Chinese uh, embassy uh, doesn't uh, uh, give them extension their uh, passports. They tell them go to China. So many of them managed to go to Turkey or somewhere else. This is the practice. And uh, through the Chinese civilian and technological uh, capability, they have already uh, every Uyghur's uh, personal information in abroad, including Central Asia and Saudi Arabia. Because in Saudi Arabia, for example, uh, the, the, there are many Uyghurs living there and there are Saudi citizens, but still says uh, Chinese immigrant or Bukhari or Uyghur. Uh, we have right now uh, uh, some families contacting in Turkey somewhere from Afghanistan, Mazari Sharif, uh, more than uh, 26 to 80 families. Uh, they're living there almost 40 years, but they're afraid because the China's Taliban were close relationship, or Taliban harm them, or depart them to China. They, thought they want to leave Afghanistan. This is their fear. In your report, you also talk about Western corporate giants. So, are you saying that the PRC are also buying their silence? Yes, China uh, has uh, invested more than 40 years in two things. One is to corrupt Western politicians, stealing their technology, and installing their own people in those big companies' CEOs, or their wives, or their uh, employees are from China. So if you, if you have today, like a Hilton company, Hilton Hotels, building a hotel, in hotel where I'm from, where the mosques were destroyed. And we ask them not to do it. They doing it because fear of Chinese money. The same is in Hollywood, NBA. And uh, uh, I uh, spent more than 19 years in Germany. Tragically, German has this genocide history. But still, Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, or Adidas, boss who designed the, the, the clothes for the Nazis, they're doing business in Estrukstan. So are you saying that these corporates are denying that anything is happening regarding alleged crimes against humanity, or are they ignoring the uh, information or evidence out there? As you know, uh, I recently uh, closely watched a hearing in Washington, uh, U.S. Congress. They invited several uh, big companies, uh, CEOs, and uh, ask them those questions. They didn't answer. They were so silent on China. But if there's any social issue in America or in West End, they will talk it, they will sponsor it. But if they come to China, they are very silent. I think they will lose their own money, 
or the company money, and the money uh, bringing them silent. You also mentioned in your report the Winter Olympics are upcoming next year. Are you proposing a similar argument for them that they are, uh, the PRC have bought their silence as well on this issue regarding the Uyghur or what, what, what is your point? You, uh, I'm so happy you are asking me this question. Look, uh, 2008, there was a Beijing Olympic where the China started it is muscle to show the world. From that time on, they said, okay, we developed us, we had enough money, we know the, how the, the, the world or the Western country, uh, we can uh, uh, influence them. And from that time on, they seeing Olympics like a, a propaganda for their image, what they 1939 did to the Nazis in Berlin. The 2022 Winter Olympic, in these circumstances, when we look at China, they doing what they're doing in Turkestan, in Tibet, in Mongolia, even on Han Chinese people in Hong Kong, and again threatening the Taiwan. In this circumstance, to give them Olympics to propagate for their own image, it's, it will be a disaster. I remember the 2008 Olympics that ethnic minorities did figure as part of the, um, the show, the sporting spectacle. Um, what is your um, view in terms of next year's Olympics? Will ethnic minorities, including the Uyghur, be invited to participate in any kind of presentation or show or spectacle? You know, uh, right now I live in the U.S. We went to sometimes I go outside and I saw origin uh, Indian uh, people there museum. And some tourists taking picture with them. I denied to take picture with them because they reminded me what's right now happening in Turkestan. They will use our clothes, our music, our best food to show the world they are fine. At the same time, they destroying this culture and the Latin people disappear. So that... I think they will, that they will show, uh, let some Uyghurs happy uh, dancing like this, I think. As part of the I propaganda. I think that uh, my, 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 uh, uh, from the past, what they did, I can just uh, project it. Okay, to move on to the comment you make about the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi. He made the comment, this, the situation of a country's human rights shall be judged by its people rather than other countries based on their own preferences. Now, China PRC are also signatories to international conventions, which are basically saying things like crimes against humanity, genocide has to be an international decision. So can you elaborate on what appears to me like a contradiction? Yes. Uh, I'm very surprised that the UN uh, didn't say anything about this argument. Because it is the China's signatory on many, many UN agreements. And if China, China's Foreign Ministry Wang Yi says uh, this uh, uh, code, it shows they already seeing the universal freedom, universal uh, uh, move, speech of movement, uh, uh, freedom, and the values is collapsed, they say. They say the next, uh, next world order will be totalitarian. And the, the, when he says this, where he says in Central Asia, with the meeting with the Iranian, Saudi Arabian uh, countries. They right now, you know, we cannot go through the Chinese internet web or Chinese people are not free to join world internet system. They have own firewall internet system. They are proposing to uh, authoritarian countries 
like Iran, and Central Asian countries, especially Tajikistan, to build them this fireable system. I imagine, I can imagine next to future, some Ira Iranian dissident will be not able to talk their loved one in Iran. This is common. And the, I'm, uh, for, the, for the, your question, you know, this is the reality. Uh, it shows China's policy. Uh, if you look back, China did everything what they planned and what they said. But in the liberal wars or free wars, never took them serious. Just imagine if we uh, do business with them, if the middle class grow up, they will uh, become like us. But from that time on, when the Ding Xiaoping began to cheat Western country in the 70s, he, they, they had planned five years plan, six years plan, seven years plan. They did it. And when the Chinese uh, foreign minister says universal value is collapsing, they mean it in my uh, an, uh, analysis. Okay, I have two more questions. One is on the Chinese Islamic Association. You write that um, in order to sinicize Islam, the Chinese Islamic Association has led the demolition of the domes and minarets on the few mosques and mas masjids left standing. Now, how, what kind of Islam are they promoting? And do, in that kind of Islam, are the, is Ramadan allowed, for instance? Is a headscarf allowed? Because everything else we're hearing is that in Xinjiang, these are not allowed. Is it just in Xinjiang? Uh, you know, when I begin here, I said, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm allowed here to say Assalamu Alaikum. You are not, as a Muslim, say Assalamu Alaikum in my country. If you so, say Assalamu Alaikum, you are religious extremes. You have some mental illness. What the Islamic uh, Association, Chinese Islamic Association doing is covering up, uh, they going to the uh, uh, friendly governments to China, particularly to uh, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, everywhere. They uh, talk to them, we are free, we, we enjoy our uh, religion, uh, uh, everything's fine, you can see the mosque there, but there are some separatists, some terrorists, do you have these own things and like this. But uh, before, uh, that, that's doing in Islamic countries, but two weeks ago, uh, I live in Virginia. There is a, uh, a S Adam Center as a big Islamic society in Virginia. They have 10 to 20 mosques to run. And they uh, supporting us. We were good, uh, close relationship with them. And uh, the head of this organization get a visit from Beijing, a Hui Muslim, so, so called Hoi Scala Muslim, to went to them, said, look, the China CCP and the uh, Uyghurs have problem. Uyghur Muslim are separatist. We Hoi Muslim are not. Right now, uh, Chinese government uh, uh, repressing them, but they threatening us very good. If you cooperate with the Uyghur Muslims, may China repress us too. This, what this shows? This shows Chinese United Front Religious Department sending their employee on the so-called Islamic scholar, not uh, disinfo the, 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 the disinformed the Islamic country or the institution in Islamic country, but they going in Islamic societies in Western country too. This, this, this. This uh, head of the uh, Adam Center was a little bit thinking, you know what he says, what the cost of benefit. If I support Uyghurs, maybe China already doing this, and they, uh, they begin to repression the other Hui Muslims. You know how the Chinese CCP's mentality to, 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 to disinform and they bring uh, the other people uh, under control. This shows 
their thinking. Yes. So uh, to return to the BRI, um, we are in Europe, and I need to just, uh, I know you were asked to look at the Middle East and Central Asia, but there are countries, uh, particularly um, Greece, Italy, Hungary, and of course this country uh, and, and several others. Are you also proposing that the PRC are buying the silence of such countries in Europe? We are here, uh, the, the, the UK were one of the EU before, eh? right now anymore. If you look in EU, one of the seven uh, G countries is Italy. Italy bankrupted by the CCP. If you look by Proto, there are many, many Chinese companies. They producing their goods and products in China, bringing to Italy those special economic sons to get just, you know, stamped made in Italy. Through that, they destroyed Italian mid-sized economy. They were very good in home goods and furniture and class. They're all gone. They built uh, highways in Montenegro, in Middle East Europe. Right now, Montenegro cannot pay the cost and maybe China will take over, or Brussels will pay for it. And uh, if you look in Indonesia, they are under, under the, the Chinese influential right now. Similar in Malaysia, the former Prime Minister uh, Mahathir Mohamed from uh, Malaysia, he went to Beijing because the, the f former government of his uh, cabinet or government already uh, had the treaty with the China about the BRI, uh, Silk Road project. And uh, Mahathir told the Chinese, look, this is not good for us. Uh, the project given in China, the project will take the Chinese company, the Chinese company will build the project, Chinese employer working there, and their money will be paid by the Chinese company. What we get? Just the debt to pay it? And then he came back, and as you know, in Malaysia, there are many uh, Chinese, uh, citizens, uh, Chinese origin Malaysians. They had uh, a, a similar, sm uh, small uh, parties. They, uh, the, the, checked their support from Mahathir, Mahathir uh, the lost his uh, cabinet. So China, if says, I'm not interfering in your government, already doing is in, 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 in Malaysia. And when we look in, in uh, Sri Lanka, the ports were beautifully built. Sri Lanka uh, couldn't pay it. China t took it for the next 100 years. And when we look in the Gawadru port in Pakistan, at least for 40 years for China, and China can deploy their, their uh, military there. Because China has this law, every big China company sh must c collaborate with people liberation armies. It means any uh, uh, investment deal, or any invest, uh, deal with China is deal with People Liberation Armies. Thank you for your evidence. The Uyghur people are in the way of the Belt and Road Initiative, aren't they? Yes. Let's use the word persecution just for the purposes of this question. Are they being persecuted because they're in the way of the Belt and Road Initiative, or are they being persecuted because they are the Uyghur people? They are persecuting, I think, in, 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 in my analysis, because the Uyghur people knows from their heavy paid experience how to warn other countries 
coming danger from China. To conquer Central Asian, they have to destroy Uyghur, Uyghur people. Because Uyghur people, we are in the Silk Road. We had many yes, religions. Exactly, precisely. Uh, forgive my interruption, okay. you. Are you saying that they are being persecuted? Same use of the word, just for these purposes. Are you saying they're being persecuted simply because they're a block in the road? Is that why they're being persecuted? They're, they are persecuting because they are owner of this land and they're blocking them to go west. Let me re try and get to the same topic. Imagine an area of China away from all the Tagistans and Kazakhstans no minerals, and there's the Uyghur people. Would China bother to persecute them then? I think yes, because uh, in uh, almost 136 years colonization by China, Uyghurs <laughs> lived many, many genocide, many, many tragic days, and uh, you know, China knows what they did to Uyghur's people. They are afraid of the Uyghur's people as a people. And then one, one question of detail. You spoke of successful efforts by the PRC to extradite people back into China. What happened to them when they were returned to China? Do you know? <coughs> For example, uh, uh, Hussein Jan Jilil was uh, deported to China from Uzbekistan. He sentenced for uh, life prison. He is Canadian citizen, sitting right now in jail. And uh, other, for example, uh, some of the students they deported to China, and uh, then they are sentenced or in concentration camps. Uh any of them, is any of them, to your knowledge, living free in China, having been extradited? No, nobody. Mr. Sabi, we return to you eight minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I think the questions that I intended to ask has already been raised, so we can release the witness if there is no more questions. <coughs> Well, just checking that nobody's had a second thought. Mr. Idris, thank you very much for coming to give your evidence today. Um, your evidence is now concluded, and thank I you. think we're going to take a break, aren't we? Yes. Can, we can we limit the break to 15 minutes, please? 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.